What's up everyone? Uh, Patrick Jones here and I'm going to take everyone through a tour of my cage out, out of my house. Completely redid this garage. It was an absolute disaster before and so we'll take everyone through and, and show everyone what it looks like now. Got Buddy in here who's always pretty much lives in here. Anyone who's been up here knows, has, has hidden here knows Buddy. He runs the uh, runs the uh, location here uh, nicest dog in the world worst worst watchdog of all time worst watchdog of all time he'll help you probably steal stuff out of here um, if you walk right in here first thing we got down here is this barber chair this is my grandpa's barber chair um, that he was a barber for over 40 years actually i'm so happy i was able to, to save this he had his own shop and uh, very in inspiring. I mean, he grew up so poor they had to use newspapers as blankets and end up retiring a, a multimillionaire from just being a barber. So um, the hard work and every time I look at this chair is is always really something that stands out to me. And then when we get into the baseball side, you know, we have the, the Marv training bands we'll sometimes do over here for movement prep work. Um, just want to get guys going if they're working on something specific. Um, you got, I got the mini hack attack, which I love. Uh, they got the screen where with like, the hood over it, um, that, so I don't get crushed in the head all the time. But I like the mini hack attack um, for a few different reasons, and um, you know I like using utilizing the mirror at times. You know this it ends up helping out a lot for players who are just trying to visually see different types of movement or visually see their actual swing itself. So sometimes what you think is not actually going on. So that's one way to, to utilize that. You know, over here, you've got the American flag, of course, which is the only thing we have standing up or hanging up in here. So, shout out, USA on the way. Uh, down here is my desk where I'm, where I'm at a lot of the time. Sometimes I'll do my podcast episode back here. Got a little bit of background. Um, got a little bit of a notebook right here where I'll write down different things about players, stuff going on. And then this pasture with the Orioles, they gave us a baseball card. So, I have my baseball card up there. It's all wrinkled now. I, don't, I think this thing probably sells for about two pennies on, on uh, eBay. But up here are some different books and, and things like that that I've collected for over time from baseball stuff. And um, this clipboard, all of these were every game from this past year from uh, the Orioles when I was in low A. A few different types of bats over here that I'll utilize with players. Sometimes I'll get creative and use some weighted bats for players who maybe dump the barrel a little bit early or something. I'll add some uh, a whole roll of tape on the end so they can really feel having to stay connected. Um, so just getting creative, you don't always have to buy the latest and greatest things and, and can kind of make do with, with whatever you have. Here on the whiteboard, I'll, what a lot of times I'll do is I'll write down kind of what we're focusing on that day if it's a group of hitters. And then this is just my own lift that I personally did up here. Uh, you gotta stay in shape myself. So those are that's that right there. Got the hit tracks right here. Probably the, my favorite tool when it comes to, I would say, tech these days, if it's used properly, I mean, this thing's unbelievable when it can track. Players love it, so every once in a while we'll have to turn it off because we're focusing a little bit too much on it, but I love Hit Tracks. It's a fantastic pop product and it's, it's worth the money, really. Over there we got some more stuff and, and tools and gadgets that we use, medicine ball, chuck it. Sometimes we'll do T-work, not a lot of T-work. But for me, one of the things that I like doing more than anything is at the beginning of each session, especially group session, we'll do some continued education stuff. So what I'll, you know, here's an example of, of Jack, for example, who just been working on, on hitting behind his front side and not drifting out so much, and he gets that front foot down early, and so I found a, a clip of a Brantley, Michael Brantley, who gets his front foot down pretty early too. And so again, just so he can visually see what he needs to what it, what it should look like and what he's currently doing. Sometimes we'll do you know different types of things. We'll go over actual live at bats of hitters, you know, actual in game at bats. Talk about approach and mental game. So I think the the continued education piece is extremely important um, when working with hitters and, and and you know trying to develop them because ideally you have to become your own best hitting coach. Uh, in my own opinion, that's what I believe. So educating them on what they need to think they need, need to do and so they can become and build their own process and become their own best hitting coach is important. So pretty much it from the cage. You can see if we look at all the lights we have I think 28 lights in here we hung or 27 lights. Uh, so it's definitely well lit. That's one of my pet peeves when I would go to other places. It would never be well lit. I don't know if they're just trying to save money or whatnot, but I was like when we're putting a cage in here, 
the lighting's never gonna be an issue. So we put 27, you spent like four grand alone just on the lighting. So yeah, it's definitely well lit. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. Up there right behind um, the tarp back there, right above, you can see some wood right there. We'll, we'll get video of guys from behind so they can look at, see and actual visualize not visualize, but actually see um, what their swing is looking like, and if their timing's an issue, they can kind of go ahead and, and be able to make adjustments because they can see, you know, when I'm throwing the pitch, what they're doing before I've uh, before they've actually loaded or anything like that. So that's pretty much it with the cage. I mean, this is a huge project. Uh, I honestly, it's unbelievable how. How, how much we've been able to do in such a short amount of time. I'm gonna, I'll show some pictures, I'll put some pictures out online of what it looked like before and then now. I mean, it was unbelievable. It took about three months to completely revamp this. Did it over quarantine when I got sent home from spring training. We had so much stuff in here that we had to have five 20 yard dumpsters outside that we had to rent to put all the crap that we were gonna throw away in here. So. Unbelievable, uh, you know, gonna do some really cool stuff going forward here, gonna potentially do some coaches clinics, smaller groups, things like that, coaches clinics up here, and, and different clinics of that sort. But again, it's been so much fun working with the players that I've been able to work with, and uh, again, appreciate everyone who's, who's watched this and has followed along and listened to the podcast. It's, I, I appreciate all the support, it's been a lot of fun. So if, you, uh, if you've enjoyed this channel or if you've enjoyed any type of content we've put out, make sure to subscribe below. And if you have any comments or anything like that, uh, make sure to comment below. So hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see everyone next time. But this was a, a, a MTV Cribs edition of my cage, if you will.